You cannot do this, Algernon. You swore that we would give up our commands when this horrific war was over. Our people need our leadership. If you're unwilling, leave. Our people must rebuild, and we must help unite them. So, we did not fight for freedom, but to conquer this land and our own. We fought to win, and now the Evanuris are as gods. I do not answer to Mythal's annoying lapdog. The people are afraid. They must believe in something. They need strength. And wisdom. They need gods who can protect them. We are not gods. You will learn that. Every lapdog hides a wolf inside. That was strange. They were speaking Elvin, but I understood it. I believe we have experienced a memory in each of our native languages. Not just any memory. One of the Dread Wolves. And the mages who declared themselves my gods? Well, mine and Davrin's, and Rook's. They're not gods at all, much less my gods. I'm with Rook. All right. What else can we take from this memory? Elgrenon was hungry for power, did anything he could to get it, and to hold on to it. Then Solus, furious at Elgernon's installing himself as a despot, started his rebellion. There's another moving part in this. Mithal. She was keeping the peace. Mithal and Solus were close. The Inquisition found a temple to Mithal, and there were wolf statues everywhere. Then she sides with Elgernon over him. A betrayal. It sounded like Solus was loyal to Mithal. What did Elganon call him? Mithal's lapdog? And then she grabs power alongside Elganon instead of standing for her principles. I'd be angry too. Angry enough to start a rebellion? That's not how he'd see it. He didn't destroy the world. Elganon did. Solus did what he considered necessary to stop him. Solus would try to justify what he did, but he'd also blame himself for what happened. Perhaps these murals aren't simply memories. They're what Solus wishes to forget. His regrets. That means they're a way to learn his weak points. Why are we worried about Solus? He's trapped. Right. But the Dread Wolf was the god of trickery. He's looking for a way out. Bet on it. Meanwhile, keep your eyes open in the crossroads. If there's a way to restore the rest of these murals, Solus would have kept it in his hideaway. It'd be nice to get inside his head for a change. I was not certain you would come. You were the one who walked away. I never turn my back when my friend needs me. The Avenue has seek the magic of the Blight. Impossible. The Blight is safely sealed away forever. Oh, I wish I could believe you. I have sensed the breaking of the wards. I will investigate your claims. If they forget the danger of the Blight, I will endeavor to remind them. What if, instead, you left the Evanuris? and remained with me. Do you not wish for freedom from this struggle? Be at peace, love. I will stop them. As you must. The Blight is our mistake. Did Mithal call Solus love in that memory? That's what it sounded like. So they were doing it. The elven gods were free with their emotions. They felt things deeply. The way they expressed things, well, it feels romantic to us, but that wasn't really how it was. Back then, I mean. Nah, they were doing it. Whether they were doing it or not, 
Solus cared about her. That's what matters. So the Dread Wolf goes to Mathal. They might be fighting, but they have history. And he warns her about the other gods using the Blight. That's more important than his rebellion. It's like kingdoms coming together when an archdemon rises. Mithal didn't think it was possible. She said the Blight was sealed away. There's an old legend about it. Davern, the one with Andruel's armor? Not sure it matters. Okay. Solus warns Mithal about the other gods using the Blight. It's not just bad, it's something bad he feels responsible for. The Blight was our mistake. How is the Blight their mistake? Did they find it? Did they make it? What does that mean? Whatever it was, it convinced Mithal to take him seriously. So Mithal goes off to investigate what Solus says. Then, what? It's too clean. Seems plenty messy with them doing it. But this isn't just a memory. It's something Solus wanted to hide. What's the crime? What did we see here that he feels guilty about? I think I might know. When the Inquisitor was saving the world from the Breach, she met Mithal. What? Like, in a dream? It was complicated. She helped the Inquisition. There was a magic pond and a dragon. Nice! The point is, she also said the other elven gods betrayed her. Killed her. Solus tried to do the right thing by warning Mithal about the other gods using the Blight. But he got her killed. Well, it's not just that she died. What do you mean, Tosh? It's... Ugh. There was stuff he wanted to tell her. But he waited too long. And then she was dead. He never got to make it right. That twists you up. That's it. There's our crime. Doesn't really tell us anything we can use, though. We know more than we did. That's something. Then I guess we keep our eyes open if we come across more of these memories. to try to cage us, jealous of our growing power. You will pay the final price for this betrayal. We warned you not to use the Blight. For this, and for Mathol, I sentence you to sleep in exile ever after. Your own lives will form the veil that keeps the horror you unleashed at bay. So he locked the gods away and created a veil between this world and the Fade. I mean, they were terrible, no question. But what he did, it didn't just stop them. It destroyed our culture, our world. It wasn't just to stop them. It was to stop the Blight. We've seen how bad Elganon and Gilanane are. Imagine all seven corrupted gods running wild. So he created the veil just to keep the elven gods locked in their prison? Yes, to keep them from accessing the Fade, but was the creation of the Veil around the world an accident? You heard him yelling. That's not the sound of a ritual going right. What do you think, Rook? I think this memory is one we understand, at least. What he did makes sense. Him regretting it also makes sense. I had another question, and I'm sorry, maybe this doesn't matter, but... Solus trapped the Blighted Gods in an ancient elven building, right? That's what it looks like. Maybe a palace? Fancier than what I've seen in Arlathan, at least. And then, the Magisters were lured into the Fade. They broke in, which let the Blight escape, and turned the Golden City black. Right, and the Black City hangs in the Fade, a little reminder of their mistakes. What's wrong, Lace? It's just... The Chant of Light says that the Maker built for them the Golden City, the center of all creation. But if the Golden City was an ancient elven palace, then the Maker didn't build it. The Elves did. The Chant of Light is Andraste's visions from the Maker. 
But it sounds like it's... wrong. You're asking if we just disproved the entire Andrastian faith. Did we? That's a problem for Chantry scholars to worry about. We have a world to save from the gods who definitely exist and also want to kill us. Looks like there are three more of these murals with the Dreadwolf's old memories. Wonder what else he's hiding. You have so long observed the world. Why not consider joining it? But I have no desire to live as humans. I have the Fade. Besides this talk of taking on a solid form, I think you underestimate the danger. When you took the glowing stone to build your body, did the Earth not shake? Delirium gives us the strength we had when we were of the Fade. We are the best of physical and spirit. I need your wisdom, Solus. To withstand the louder voices who would go too far like Elganon. I need you. This is madness. You must know that. I will always follow where you go. This is astounding. The ancient elves were spirits who voluntarily manifested a physical form. I'd rather go back to talking about the Blight. Hey, Lucanus, could Spite turn into an elf? No. Sorry, but... what? Okay, no. This whole spirit thing is stupid, and I vote we ignore it. Seconded. To be clear, this memory only shows that the first elves originated from spirits. You three are no more spirits than anyone else conceived naturally. Conceived naturally? Guess I'll go ask my mother. The knowledge that an entire people were formed from a mass manifestation could change our entire understanding of magic. If we let it out, is that the right call? Do you want bigoted humans yelling about how elves are demons? Davern's got a point. World's not short on small-minded humans. The entire idea is preposterous. Who would even believe us? It does seem outlandish when taken out of context, I admit. We have to tell someone, though. Strife and Irulan, at least. If I told Thea and Viago, they'd think I was sampling Viago's poison collection. No one would believe us. Okay. We keep this to people we trust, who have good reason to know. No shouting it from the rooftops. Agreed. The Morn Watch has a great deal of experience keeping dangerous secrets. So, beyond the world-shaking stuff, what else did we learn here? Solus himself was a spirit. What kind do you think he was? Well, his name is Elvin for pride. Oh, okay. There's something else. Not about spirits, or not all about them at least. Solus didn't want to become a person with a physical body. Right. He only agreed after Mathal begged him. Then that's his regret. He wishes he'd never taken physical form. Maybe. But not just that. Solus was scared. They built their bodies out of lyrium, and it made the ground shake. They were so happy about gaining the lyrium's power that they didn't notice it came from the Titans. Or didn't care. The first memory we saw with Elganon seizing power, it happened at the end of a war. A war between the Titans and the Elves. Those power-hungry bastards. It feels like we still don't have the full picture. But I think that's part of what Solus regrets. He didn't see the danger. Except he did. He was worried. You said it yourself. He did it for Mithal. Everything that followed, he could have prevented, if he just told her no. Then he's got a war on his conscience. Plus, whatever we find next.
Have you created what we need? With this, the proper ritual will sunder every titan from its spirit. But you must know those severed dreams will certainly be driven mad. A disembodied blight of pain and anger. It is awful what we're doing. And the only way to end this war. Solus made the weapon that killed the Titans. No, not killed. He cut away their dreams and left them broken and mindless. He passed me in the halls of Skyhold for a year. He made polite conversation, and he knew. He knew what he did. I don't know what to say, Lace. I, I can't even imagine. I'm so sorry. I served in the Inquisition. I know terrible things happen in war. But to do something like this... The Titans were the size of mountains. I doubt the Elves were winning their fight. He considered this the cost of saving his people. Fear and guilt make people do stupid things. To do such a thing? No wonder regret eats away at Solus. No, it's worse than that. That isn't what Solus regrets. Those severed dreams will be driven mad. A disembodied blight of pain and anger. Mierda. You can't. That's not possible. When a warden hears the calling, it's like a song in their mind. Sound familiar to you, Lace? The song of Lyrium. Of the Titans. We think of the Blight as this monstrous force with no mercy, no compassion. Evil incarnate. Instead, it's a caged animal. Mistreated and imprisoned for centuries. Until all it knows is fear. In all my talks with him, Solus hates the Blight more than anything. Even more than Elganon. But it wasn't hatred. It was guilt. He knew this could happen, and he still didn't stand up to Mythal and stop it. Each of these memories has been a deeper regret, and almost all of them involve Mythal. Only one mural left to uncover by my count. If we find it, we'll see what's worse than this. I knew that you would find me, soon enough. You need the power of a god. The strength that I alone still carry. The blighted Evanuris will soon break free from their prison. I must make a stronger one that can contain them. While the prison is important, it is not the only goal you seek. Why should I not tear down the veil and bring back immortality to all the elven people? They deserve it. The elven people of today do not deserve to see the world they love be torn apart to salve your conscience. I must fix what I have broken. I am sorry. As am I, old friend. Solus killed Mithal? After all that? Is this another memory from a different time? No. He wore that same outfit in the Inquisition. We knew Solus woke up in this world without most of his power. Now we know how he got it back. By killing the only other god around and stealing her power. All that epic magic and godly power. In the end, it comes down to love and murder. Same as always. All these memories are about Solus being sad that he was right and nobody else could see it. He was right about how becoming elves would lead to war with the Titans, but Mithal wouldn't listen. He was right that using the dagger on the Titans was evil, but Mithal wouldn't listen. He was so proud when he imprisoned the other gods. Finally, he got to prove that he was right and they were wrong. Then he wakes up in our time and finds out he was wrong. The elves have nothing. The Blight's a constant threat. 
And Mathal's alive, somehow. But she still won't listen. But this time he'll show her, no matter what it takes. So, how does everything we know help us now? He's being honest about fighting the Blight. Whatever happens, he won't risk letting it back out into the world. Agreed. But he has a plan to escape that prison, and not one we'll like. He turned on Nithal, the one person he was actually loyal to. There's no way he won't turn on us. He's a spirit, or was once. He might be able to possess someone, affect minds, all the things spirits do. He created the Veil. His very nature is tied to it. That will be a source of strength, but also a potential weakness. Mithal has them all messed up. Anything about her or Elgernon is going to make him angry. Sloppy. Solus thinks he knows what's best for everyone. Anything he does, he'll do while telling himself he's the hero. That gives us something to start from. Elganon and Gilanain are the two big problems right now. But when Solus makes his move, we'll be ready. You have witnessed the Protector's tale, Dweller. Almost to its end. Almost? How can there be more? When the mighty fall, their echoes cross the ages. An audience is warranted. Speak with your visitor. She awaits you in the crossroads. Well met. How did you get here? I did tell you I had my ways through Alluvians when I introduced you to the Inquisitor, did I not? The Alluvians in general, yes, but not the Dreadwolf's crossroads. I would think you have more pressing questions at the moment. Questions about Solus and Mithal? Mithal? The two gods have always been linked, have they not? First, when Mithal bade her companion spirit to abandon the Fade and take on mortal form. Then, when Solus spilled Mithal's mortal blood, that he might absorb her power as his own. Wait, how do you know exactly what we saw of Solus's past? Think upon it, Rook. You saw for yourself in the Dreadwolf's memories. When Mithal stood against the gods' manipulations of the Blight, she was betrayed and struck down. Yet she survived and returned ages later to aid the Inquisition in its hour of need. How? If I knew, I wouldn't be here asking you. You are not a fool, Rook. Do not play at it. You observed that the first elves were spirits, did you not? Mathal was a spirit turned elven. And when her body was struck down to spirit, she returned. Her essence sheltered in a willing mortal vessel. Over the centuries, she journeyed from host to host, slowly amassing her former power anew. Until once again, she was struck down, on this occasion, by Solus. He absorbed her power, but not her memories. Then where did they... Wait. You? As you say. So, you're the next host of Mathal? Believe it or not, as you choose. What? That was like how Elganon and Gilanin can talk in your head, but... Twas Mathal you heard, her echoes, yet I am not the goddess returned. What are you then? 
I once feared Mathal would consume me were I to carry her, but was not so. I remain free-willed and mortal. What I now possess is but a spark of Mathal, shadowed memories through which to sift for meaning. As to our admixture, I suspect you have questions? You didn't come out here just to tell me you're Mathal. I am not Mathal in her entirety, but yes. The Dreadwolf has occasion to visit you in dreams, where he portions out advice. And now, after finding his memories, you have peered into his deepest sorrows. Tell me then, what do you make of Solus? Solus talks a lot about what has to be done, being forced to make hard choices. But it's like he's trying to talk himself into it. I think, deep down, he doesn't entirely believe what he's saying. Tis exactly like the old wolf to tie himself into the most intricate knots. Tis not malice which made Solus your opponent, but conviction. A belief that only he may halt what he set in motion. Yet Solus was once beloved of Mathal. Tis his very loyalty and love for his people that led to the tragedy we now face. You may be in a position to determine how it ends, more so than either of you might realize. Well, that's not terrifying at all. You have been thrust into the lives of gods. Fate will have its way, whether or without our permission. Even more comforting, Morrigan. If you would shape the outcome of your battle, I've one last secret to share. When Mathal was struck down by the other gods, it was with her own Lyrium dagger, the dagger you now carry. Solus recovered it from Elgonon, and from it extracted a fragment of Mathal that had lain hidden within its depths. This fragment, a younger sister to the one I carry, if you will, resides here, in the crossroads. All of that sounded great until survived the encounter. You know Solus, and have seen Elgonon, and memories of Mathal. They are creatures of emotion, as all spirits are. The fragment of Mathal that resides in me lived among mortals for thousands of years. She has grown wiser and more patient. This younger sister has not. She is the essence of Mathal as a god. She is unlikely to listen to polite requests, and though she is but a fragment of the goddess, the battle will test you sorely. If she's just going to attack us, why tell us about her at all? We have enough enemies already. A fragment of a god's en or against the dread. Thank you for the information, Morrigan. There is... Yeah, there is... A hope. Getting close to where Morrigan said that other fragment of Mithal was. That has to be her. Will this be a conversation with words or knives? Guess what? You are Rook. I have seen you and your companions. I never again expected to see my children in the Dreadwolf's crossroads. And you know who I am. Mithal. The part of me that survived betrayal by the rest of the Evanuris, if this can be called surviving. Solas. He drew me from the dagger that struck me down, but what is left of me can only survive here. I cannot return to the world, and even the true Fade is denied me. All I can do is watch. Have you come to seek the blessing of your god? 
Or did you come to ask your god to sacrifice herself to help you defeat the monsters Elganon and Gilanane have become? You are not my god, and I'm done talking to you. Ungrateful child. You would not be here had I not waded through fire and blood to give the Elven a future. You desire the essence of a god and think you deserve it. Then take it if you can! Everyone get ready. Of course, she had to turn into a dragon.
We have it. The essence of Mithal, the protector. It burns just being near it. But this is the power we need to finish this. All we need now is the right target. I think the moment is coming. When we can turn the tide, we'll know. <laughs>